Thank you all for clicking on the video. I'm Michael Waddell, if you don't know. Been really blessed to work in the hunting industry a long time, and before I even started working in the space, man, I just was obsessed with hunting, anything hunting. But some of the first things that I really had a chance to hunt that I would consider big game, deer was the first, and that led to turkey. Like a lot of us, I started with squirrel and rabbit and everything else, but obviously all across North America, um, we have white-tailed deer, and so many people obviously realize that there is deer calls and there's deer sounds, but a lot of times we don't really have a good breakdown. So I just wanted to real quick, just some of the fundamental noises that deer makes and go over some of the calls that you can use to imitate these. And obviously you can use these calls and start gaining a lot of confidence to manipulate these deer to your stand to get to within range, especially when you start talking about certain times of year. Um, you know, obviously the best time to use these calls when you're leading into the pre-rut and these bucks are starting to really breathe, they get really dominant. But when it comes to the sounds, there's so many sounds that's made that obviously we don't really realize what these sounds may mean. In some cases we might do, but they could be a little different interpretation from the standpoint, will it ruin your hunt? Does it help you? Does it hurt you? So I was going to talk about some of those sounds. I mean, one sound that typically no hunter wants to hear is a doe blowing or a buck blowing. And it's just a, you know, obviously you won't ever find a call that imitates that because it's useless to try to put to use in the woods because you don't want to hear it. That's when a deer is actually alerted, but it's just a You'll hear that a lot. And, and for me, a lot of times when people hear a doe blow or a buck blow or any time, it doesn't mean in every case that the hunt's over. Like, well, I'm done and get down and, and call it over. You know, it's, it's the same if a turkey's putting. A lot of times they can be curious. A lot of times that doe don't know what's going on. A lot of times if you listen, especially during a lot of movement and especially around the pre-rut when these bucks are harassing those does, those does will blow and they will make all kind of ruckus really trying to find out what might be in the bushes. They don't want to be harassed by these bucks. So a lot of times you'll hear does blowing off in the distance and you think, man, is a coyote over there? What is going on? Am I ruined? Am I busted here? That ain't the case. So also when you hear a doe blow or even a deer blow, it doesn't mean that you're done, but typically it isn't a curiosity. It's an alarm. They stomp their foot. And a lot of times I've seen deer come up to a snake and stomp their foot and just and they're wanting it to move just like us. Hey, hey, get out. You know, they're making noises. So that's a lot of times when you hear that. But a lot of times when you hear that you'll hear them bounding off. And usually that's when they have really smelled the rat, they smelled you, they know you're there, and they're gone. A lot of times a buck won't even blow, he just smells you and he's just out. So past that, you got all the calls that we'll use and demonstrate to talk about that you can help maybe manipulate a deer in range. Obviously when it comes to grunt calls, you'll see from our bone collector line, we've got a plethora of different grunt calls, all different prices, different sounds and tones. So like a turkey call, you will find the one that you like. I think overall when it comes to these sounds and the way you can talk on them and use them as a musical instrument, you got to find the one that works for you. For instance, I'll blow a couple, but your typical just deer grunt, your typical buck grunt. This could be a buck that is close by. He's not really a tendon grunt. We'll get into that. This is just a what's up. A lot of times a buck will walk into another buck or a doe and he just grunts to let himself be heard and to make sure that buck knows that he's in the area during early season, they're coming in and you'll hear these grunts, but it's not anything big. It's just a A lot of times it's just a right, one time, right? Like I'm here, daddy's home, or you'll hear a young buck grunt sometimes out of submission to another bigger buck coming in. And you know, obviously when you talk about grunts, you know, some people like this, this tube, you can turn, you can do different things with it, but a a lot of these calls are adjustable, but for instance, that's just the old classic. Some of the first grunt calls that ever come on the market was this style of build. Then you got the old standard, which is the old wooden barrel. These are really cool calls. They kind of got that warm, cool look, a little traditional sense to them. So obviously we offer these. They got a really good solid sound, but notice there's a different sound. But a lot of times that comes off real grunty and abrupt, that's more of that tending grunt type of sound. But a typical curiosity grunt, a lot of times it'd be one or two grunts. So you get all the way down to 
this call, which is a really, really nice call. It's really soft to the touch. I like this call a lot because it's got a built-in snort wheeze and it's also really soft to the touch. So it's nice and warm. It don't clank around if you hit it on a safety rope or your bow riser or a gun or rifle. This is a really soft call and it's really nice and you can really squeeze this down and manipulate. A good sounding grunt. Hear how grunt, hear how realistic and just completely, uh, you can feel it coming from the gut. It's a little softer. Also this call you can get a little louder. So obviously now we're going to start talking about the different types of grunt. We talked about just the regular curiosity grunt. Just You'll hear that a lot. Maybe you're at a feeder, it's early season, September let's say. It's early season or you're in a food plot and you'll hear that. That's just a grunt that he's letting to know the deer there. You might hear a couple grunts and that's almost deer talking. Obviously they don't have a communication like we do in a multi, you know, big time vocabulary, but a grunt is usually what they got. And we talked about the blowing. So you have those noises. Here's another call, and this is probably my favorite. So a lot of people will argue on what a real deer grunt sounds like, but typically it's a real clicky, it's a real reed type of vibe, and it's also got that guttural. This to me, in my opinion, you could disagree. My opinion, this particular call is loud, it can be soft, but it has the most realistic clicky sound that I hear most big bucks make and it sounds like this so a lot of times that hog sound that that same as a old pig coming through the woods that buck has the same type of tone other than it typically is a little more straight abrupt and you know immediately even when you're hunting around hogs you kind of know that's a buck grunting so I'll go through that. So the casual just walking up to the feeder, you hear that, that you hear those little clicky, it's just a, it just sounds so good. But now you get into, it's starting to get into the rut. That's when it gets to be more loud. You hear the roars, you hear the tending grunts, there's clicking that you'll hear, all kind of different things, especially if you hunt those Midwest areas, sometimes in Texas where the buck to doe ratio is really good. Sometimes in our Southern states, we don't hear the vocalization. A lot of you guys are saying, hey man, I'm here, you Waddell, but I'm not hearing and seeing a lot of this stuff out in the woods. Man, I hunted a long time in Georgia before I ever really heard a deer grunting and I remember prior to that when I really saw them I remember going back and thinking I might have even heard a deer grunt and didn't realize that I had heard it so anyway let's talk about more of the tending grunts so a lot of times when a buck is running and he's he's really tending a doe or he's going behind a doe even if he's not right behind him he's just basically what's in him he's yearning to find and he's so worked up he's just mm. Mm. Similar to if we got this banana pudding, we're just, mm. 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 I feel weird even making that racket and acting that way. But that's what this buck doing. You got to realize this buck has worked all year to get his body in shape to survive, only to look forward to this November breeding season. So here it is. It's early or late in October. It's maybe early in November. He smells the scent of this succulent doe or maybe he knows it's close by. So a lot of times you'll hear this. And you'll look and you'll just see a stiff legged buck. He is on that trail of that hot doe. Or a lot of times you'll see the telltale sign. Boom, boom. You hear a doe run by you. Sometimes getting back to that blow, you hear that. And you're, boom, boom, boom. you're like, what spooked that? Listen close. You hear that. Nothing had spooked that deer other than this buck that is trying to do things to her that she does not want to allow at this point. So pay attention. Every doe blow, especially around that time of year, that vocalization doesn't mean that even if you're hunting on public ground, it was another hunter. It could be very well that a buck is harassing this doe. And let me tell you, they harass them all night, all up into the hours of daylight, especially early morning on these full moons and even those dark moons. So right at daylight, you might hear that a lot. Does blowing, all this ruckus, and you just wonder if everything's going ray, and maybe they smelled you. A lot of times that'll be these bucks have harassed these deer so much that they're on point. They're coming in, and you think that they're nervous because they're on to you. They're not. They are out there, and they've had a lot of really 
bad thinking bucks that have harassed them all night against their will. Now finally they will submit when that time can, comes. But in those processes, these grunts, it's kind of like a chicken. If you feed a chicken, what happens? Other chickens around, they can be eating fine over here. You feed one chicken, they see that chicken, they come run over to eat what that chicken's got. So bucks are very selfish. They're very one-sided. They're not worried about social media. They're wanting to breed every doe out there. So a lot of times if they're going through the woods and even though they know that it ain't quite time to have a chance to breed, if they hear that, they're perking up and they're like, okay, Ed is ahead of me. He's done found one and I have it. So a lot of times they will come charging in. They might do it silent. You might hear a grunt back from them. Then a lot of times you have situations where bucks see each other and you might have a chance to hear this to where the bucks are really just immediate. They'll be and then all of a sudden they'll look at each other and just and, the, and, and a lot of times that roar, a lot of times will be in complete frustration of a doe standing there and they want to breed so bad they just walk up into that herd in a food plot and you're here. And you'll just hear that it's just telling her my personal opinion. I don't know if he's talking to her or he's talking to himself. It's just something that comes out of him. Just like, just like when you when you get scared or maybe it's a good taste of food. You just mmm. Sometimes you can't help it. Or when you get up in the morning, like mmm. Maybe you're sore when you get up. I feel like it's an involuntary sound. Then you get into some of these grunts that are very, very much said to be heard especially when it comes to other bucks in the area bucks are very dominant and you got to picture this why does these calls work why does a tending grunt work why does a buck war grunt so i'll get back to that tending grunts all right now you got more of the roar Then you got the clicking that you hear. Very rare to hear clicking. I've only heard it seven or eight times, but when you hear it, it's, you know exactly what it is. But a lot of times you hear the, the little tending grunt in front of it. Especially if you're around a place where you see deer in captivity, during the rut, you'll see that. And when they are doing those noises, other deer are receptive does that are already harassed it's not probably going to help you a lot with the does a lot of times they won't go anywhere they're already on the edge they're looking for these bucks to harass them just as much as they're looking to smell a predator which would be a human in the stand hunting them so then it gets right on into what i would consider i think the most deadly call if you see a buck cruising you know it's rut you haven't heard a grunt you haven't heard anything but you know it's time and you see a buck off in the distance Maybe he's 200 yards, he's cruising. You got your bow, especially it's Midwest. You're hunting a CRP field, maybe a cut beam field, and you see a good, nice, mature buck, and you see him, and he's going. Typically, the wind matters, because usually, just like a coyote, when this buck hears this call, if he decides to come to a grunt or this call I'm about to demonstrate, he's gonna come around downwind. So the two calls I would use in that situation, I see this buck, the first thing I'm gonna do is hit him with a grunt. If he bites on that, most of the time they'll bite on it and look. Sometimes if a buck's really keyed in, he commits to start coming. But if he goes back to walking, like I'm not worried about that, I'm still looking for a doe, I haven't smelled what I want to smell, I'm not worried about what I hear, I'm worried about what my nose is, hit him with what you call a snort wheeze. This is the most deadly call, and it's just a... <laughs> this model, we got a snort wheeze built in. It's real simple. You're just forcing air through it. Usually they start with a... Two to three before the long wheeze, just to. There's no wronger way about it. A lot of bucks do it short, some do it a little longer, but that right there, that exact sound, if you can mimic that sound, if that buck is mature and that's his home turf and it's the perfect timing in his mind to where he's looking for that doe and he hears that, at this point, there's two things in my, my opinion that goes through his mind. Either he thinks there's another buck with a doe, or regardless if he thinks that, to him, this is no different than you. You're in your lazy boy, and maybe you're getting up and you're cruising the perimeter of your house to see what's going on. Maybe you're looking to see if mama is 
has got a nice shower and whatever this analogy and I'm not gonna go any further than that and you're walking the circle of your perimeter of your home and all of a sudden you hear some dude say a bad word to you and tell you that he's the man 90% of us if we have any type of ego pride or just complete manhood about us we're going to at that moment go immediate to this sound that's a life and death situation to where you are challenging us and you're calling us out this is what that snort wheeze is that is the ultimate middle finger to a buck and it's a that is the ultimate disrespect so many times when that buck is cruising and he's looking and he's looking for a doe and he hears that he will turn on a dime and the only thing he's going to do at that point most of the time he's going to always well every time he's going to that wind so i think that that snort wheeze and all grunt calls work the best on cold clear mornings because typically you got thermals that help that scent dissipate up into the atmosphere straight up so that snort wheeze is probably my favorite call grunt first snort wheeze what i do last especially if i'm visual in this buck and i'm even do it blind is rattling and that's pretty simple to know that's when two bucks have actually met they're fighting for dominance they're trying to get the pecking order right they're trying to get the situation right and you're here bucks rattling other bucks are very keen to still say what are these two deer doing in my area and also there's a product of opportunity that could present themselves if there's a hot doe especially in this right time of year when they're pecking order is at a t you know pecking order might not be a word but they're trying to get the herd dominance down but it could be that there's a younger buck in the area maybe he's nice too and he hears bucks fighting he's coming in curious curious because he wants to see this commotion but he also is like a little mall stud he's thinking if these guys are tied up fighting there's a doe in heat i'm gonna come in and swoop her away you see that in the in the wild with turkeys and a lot of different other animals it's a dog eat dog world and it's a simple sound that imitates two bucks and their antlers clashing I personally like a rattle bag because I can basically put this right here, wrap this rubber band around, it stays quiet, easy off, and it's right here, soft to the touch, and when I get it out, even in cold weather, it's easy to handle. A lot of people think that it's got to be this large, loud, booming sound that echoes that you can hear from Georgia to Iowa. It certainly don't hurt nothing, but this is easy to put in your pack. This is a rattle bag that we have. And what's cool about it is you're never gonna bust your knuckles. And typically for me, most of the rattling I do is sight rattling and grunting. So I maybe grunted, I maybe snort wheezed, I've caught his attention, maybe had him coming. My last step is a rattle. And it's really no rhyme or reason, but just thinking two bucks coming together. And then. If you like. You want to add a little realism, just make you feel even better about your calling. Usually I do it in short spurts. Obviously if you're in a deer stand and you do that to a buck, you visually see him. You try to get his attention, make sure he knows there's two bucks fighting, and then put him down because he's going to look your way. Obviously the last thing we will do is pick him out. But typically he's going to be looking under that tree, and he, if he decides to come, he is coming. At that point, I feel like I'm done with my rattling horns. If he starts work, walking pretty stiff to that, you typically got him, in my opinion, until he smells you. If he slows down, if he slows down and maybe starts getting some disinterest, now I got my bow in my hand, that's when I'm gonna hit him with a little grunt. And a lot of times, here he comes. You finish him with that. So overall, these are sounds that bucks make the last call i'll give you and holy cow it probably was 10 years ago i would say the number one call that people were using was a doe bleat a bleat and heat i personally we offer them bone collector i never take a bleat and heat very rarely there was cans that was really popular uh, we make a mouth or reed type call that that imitates a, a bleat of a doe it's a real simple call once you hear it a few times it's just a not gonna lie, man, showing that we keeping it real, man. The battery died right when I pulled out the doe bleat. But again, I'll make this noise one more time. They were real popular several years ago. They still work. I just don't practice a lot. But a doe bleat, you see the cans. This is a handheld reed type of call that you can make the same sound. There's a lot of 
lot of things you can do with that. If you wanted to, you could probably do a jackrabbit. <laughs> if you want to turn it into a predator call, not the best predator call, but you can still use it. A lot of times I'll put calls in my pack for multi-use. So there's a lot of things you can do with that. Again, the doe bleat, that is something that was really popular not long ago. A lot of people swear by it and it can work. I just don't use it a lot and I'm being honest about that, but we offer it if you're interested. So anyway, that's a rundown of noise that deers make. Sounds that deer make. They do have a language. They do have sounds that they make. They communicate with each other and you can use it to help fill your tag. So I hope this helps a little bit. I'm just shooting straight from the heart and the things I've seen out there that I've heard and also sounds I've had a chance to manipulate deer within range to fill those tags. And some of them have been some big ones, man. So don't hesitate. It's just like calling elk. It's just like calling duck or turkey. Once you get the confidence in what these sounds mean, and you can do very minimal practice because the good thing about deer sounds, you don't have to be an expert. The calls themselves imitate the sounds. It's a little bit of uh, air through these calls and you can get close enough to make sounds that can manipulate these bucks within range. So good luck, man. Happy hunting. Try some of these deer sounds. Hopefully they'll help you fill a tag. Also, make sure to subscribe, man. Make sure to subscribe to this channel. We'll keep more things coming at you.